All right, I wanted to show you this uh, refrigerator mod that I made. Um, I haven't tested it in the field yet, but I, I already know it's going to work um, just because of the nature of what we've been experiencing is <clears throat> on really hot days, the fridge does stay very cold still, but you can tell it's a little bit warmer. Um, and then especially the, the beers, oh, excuse me, sodas in the door here they are definitely warmer than the rest of the food inside the refrigerator um it's it's obvious they're still cold and drinkable and you know delicious but you can tell they're a little bit warmer so the other thing i noticed is the back of the very back of the fridge gets ice buildup which means it's working great um, i actually did the mod inside of here where you you turn the thermostat in like a three quarters of a turn and it, it did it helped a whole bunch i only ran it on like three or i think it was three last time and everything in the fridge was super cold the uh, the eggs like i had uh tupperware right here and the eggs inside the tupperware in the back they were frozen so that means that this thing was working great so the problem is the ventilation right so if the if the food in the back of the tupperware is getting frozen and the drinks up here are noticeably warmer than the rest of the stuff and there's ice in the back clearly we have a ventilation issue so i'm like okay we have these glass shelves that don't they just block everything so i found this grate here and it's the exact perfect size it's exactly correct these little things it's, it's just because it's like a shelf or something else but they're not in the way i'm going to get another one of these and, and i'm going to replace this one too now we get full ventilation top to bottom, and then I added a fan. Now what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull all that cold, frosty air from the back of the fridge, and it's gonna blow it all the way to the front. So now my beers are gonna be, I mean sodas, my sodas are gonna be ice cold, and it's gonna work out great. So I, I ended up wiring a button in here. So when I push it, she comes on, works really well. And I already did the calculations and I had a real world test because I have a battery monitor. I have the Victron, which is a fantastic battery monitor. Um, so I don't need to test anything. I just look at the monitor and this pulls less power than the max air fan does on level two. Uh, it pulls a, a little bit more than when it's on one. So, and I've left the max air fan on high for like eight hours before it and it's never been an issue. So the fact that this pulls so little power it's i don't think it's going to be an issue whatsoever so it's going to move all the air to the front and now everything in the front is going to be nice and cold and it's going to be great and then the other concern was like oh it's drawing a lot of power blah 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 i thought about potentially adding a rheostat so i could control the fan speed so if i needed to pull a little less power or if it's too noisy but Can't even hear it. It's super quiet. And then the other thing with the power, the potential power issue is the only time this would really need it is when it's super hot outside, right? So midday. And what happens during midday? All of the solar panels on the top are getting the most amount of amperage that you can possibly get throughout the day, right? So this little tiny little rink-a-dink fan pulling like 0.2 amps is is nothing compared to the amount of power that's coming in from the solar so the only time that i'm really going to need to be running this thing is when we're getting the maximum amount of juice from the sun and then at night right it cools off so we don't need this on anymore i'll just turn it off everything works great everything's going to be cold from the the middle of the day when it's been cooling off so there's really no reason to have a rheostat i i, I can't think of a reason to actually have one so i didn't put one in i still have it and but I think I'm going to send it back. So anyways, I wanted to show you this. Worked out pretty nice. What I did was I, there's power wires in the back of the fridge. And all I did was tap into those. They're, they're just literally screw on things. It's, you just put the wires right into it. It's super easy. I ran them up behind the fridge on the side, pulled the little screw out here, pulled this off and I just drilled a hole through it. No big deal. The little tiny hole. It's really no big deal. It's just insulation. And then I ran the wires through, and then I powered the fan with the switch. Bada bing. Super easy. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you, and I think it's going to work out nicely. This is going to go, too. I'm getting, another, I'm getting another wire shelf. I like it. Okay. 
See you guys later.